So you guys have already seen my demonstration with um, the the pa one of the pages that I've done in the personal comic I did with you guys. And I'm gonna kind of talk you through a little bit more that I didn't quite touch up beforehand. So let's get to it. Why we use blue. So you notice that I used a blue pen. It was probably really hard to see in some points. I had to do a lot of contrasting in the editing process. Uh, we use this non-photo blue because it cannot be detected by copiers or scanners. This allows the artist to lay down the sketch lines without needing to erase after inking. Uh, we can also use a light pink as well. So if you decided to use light pink instead of blue, that's totally fine as long as it's light enough that I can drown it out in the editing process because that will be very important. So I sometimes pre-sketch to clarify the vision hierarchy page to that. I highly recommend this. So I do, as you saw, I work, I work in layers where I do basic panel layout and I play with my ruler and then I go back in, put in as much detail as I think I need. And then I go into the line art process. And with the line art process, I'm gonna kind of go over some things that again, I didn't quite touch base with uh, during the demonstration. It's so the small, medium, and large, small are good for details, hairstyles, more fine-tuned design. So say you wanna do a really big textured base thing, then I would suggest some of the smaller pens. When you're doing medium, I do that for usually just outlining the basic characters and stuff like that. And when it comes to big, those are for like the panels, to draw the eye to a certain place. And the brush pen, it gives it more emotion and eye-catching detail. As you probably saw, imagine if it was flat. Uh, here's an example of what would happen if a picture was flat to when it had the brush details given. See how different that is? There's a whole new feel to it when I put those brush strokes in. You guys have probably heard me say this time and time again as you've worked with me, but the brush pen you need to be gentle with. Push and pull. It's just like a fine-tuned instrument. You want it to be floaty and light in certain areas. You need to barely touch the page. You need to whisper to the page. Whereas if you want a thicker line, that's when you can kind of press down. But I wouldn't press too down to fray the brush that you have. Take good care of that brush pen. There are three different types of ways in which you can represent the uh, the tincture of full color in your comics, and it is hatching, stippling, and grayscale. Hatching. It is the technique used to create tonal or shading effects. It's also used in the monochromatic heraldic representations to indicate what a tincture of full color in blazon would be. What I mean by that is it's in your head what the colors of your characters would be since you cannot convey that into the black and white paneling. You do that through your hatching or grayscaling. Uh, and so because we know that the black, uh, you can use the, uh, you can do the illusion of grayscale just with the black, depending on how far apart the lines and hatching can be, it's also representation like that kind of color palette-ish. So say you have a dark brown shirt for a character, I would suggest close hatching to make it not black, but still very dark to give that illusion of that kind of dark brown. It tells the audience where the imaginary cutting plane cuts the material of an object as well. So it kind of shows where the light places and how the, uh, look at this hand. You can kind of see the line work and that's due to the shadowing of light. And that's basically what it, what it means to do the imaginary cutting plane. So that hatching kind of helps with the, the cutting planes that we see in everyday life trans, uh, transitioned into the illustrative form. And then there's also, aside from hatching, there is another technique which I don't often use just because it's really mean to my microns, but it is very beautiful and a lot of really famous artists do it. Here's some examples of famous artists that do stippling. Stippling is the clusters of dots that are also given the illusion of the grayscale or uh, heraldic representations of tincture of full color. Grayscale. Black the white color to uh, black through white color to present depth to your image. Don't let it be flat. I want to know where the light is coming from and how it plays with the object. If you have trouble here, if you have trouble 
I'll give you some tips. Set simple objects, shapes for you to draw. Move around the object and draw. Think about the light and how it hits different when you move from a different angle. Think of it in layers. Focus on one shade at a time. Start light, then gradually darken the shadows. I would also super suggest just Googling light shading and you can find all sorts of stuff of when light comes down to the side, upwards. I don't want it all to be flat. And, and consider how the normal shading is here. Look at this dark shading here. The light's coming towards me and below me. So consider multiple light forms and stuff too. And I would say practice a lot. And if you're unsure about something, my best suggestion would be like draw air, like light with your blue pens or blue pencils. Draw arrows where you think the light is going to go. Just like what you did in the storyboards or at least in the examples that I showed you. And that can kind of help pinpoint where the shading will be because it'll all flow in the similar direction as the light. If you need to do just some basic shading, that's okay. It doesn't take away and you guys are still learning, so. You guys should be on the final point of um, touch-ups, which is the post-production point. So congratulations, you guys are almost through. I'm so proud of you guys and the hard work you put in. I cannot wait to get the hard copies and make this into a printable comic for you to actually hold in your hand and for me to hold in my hand. I will cherish this forever and I thank you guys for joining me. And this was a very intense camp, so really pat yourself on the back. You did a wonderful job and you did it in the professional way of a comic writer slash illustrator. Good job guys. I cannot wait to see you next. I hope you enjoy your summer, and I'll see you next time. Bye.